friends, some of the girls, boot campers. A couple of, yeah. Good, 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 good. Okay, so we're going to go over to a um, foul and yielding. Um, but before we do, let's just have a brief discussion on the spirit of play. So, does anyone, let's do a refresher. The spirit of play of the short track roller derby is to play fair and have fun, healthy athletic competition. The object of the game is to score more points than the other team. Best part. Um, so in short track roller derby, an intentional foul is considered cheating and a gross offense against the spirit of sport and fair play. Often a skater is in a position where it's clearly to their advantage to foul, uh, but that skater is morally bound to abide by the rules and avoid or remedy such a foul. Further, there are many occasions where a skater is in a position to accidentally and unintentionally foul. That skater is bound to be self-aware and in control in order to avoid such a foul whenever possible to remedy the foul if necessary. The integrity, fun, fair, and safe play of short track roller derby depends on each skater's responsibility to uphold the spirit of the game. This responsibility should not be taken lightly. All that to say, folks, it is your responsibility as a skater to not do dangerous, unsafe, or illegal stuff on the track. Uh, we're going to talk about how you fix it if you do an unintentional. Obviously, we don't want anyone doing intentional. Um, but I think what makes this um, like dramatically different from uh, bank track or flash track roller derby, for example, is that in those two rule sets, you could be skating along, and I have done this a lot, my friends, like, oh, my skate just went out of bounds but the referees didn't notice, so I just continue. Phew, lucky me. Or like, ooh, I did a bit of an illegal hit on that person. Like, I followed through with my elbow, but like, ooh, good, nobody noticed, and I didn't get a penalty. So in short track roller derby, if you notice that you did a thing and that it was a foul and it's, it's technically not allowed in the rules, then it's your responsibility to fix it and to restore the fairness of the game. Okay, so that's the kind of moral code that we're all bound by as we play roller derby. Any questions about that, y'all? Are you excited about that? Good question. If we've made a mistake, how do we fix it? So we're going to go through that. That's like the whole next section that we're going to work on. Um, so uh, section six is fouls and remedies, and I'm not going to read the whole rules, so don't worry. But I'm going to read parts of it so I don't have this. So fouls and procedural fouls, two different types of fouls you can have, are actions or situations which cause unfair advantage or disadvantage or are unsafe. So fouls may be remedied, which means restoring fairness, through advantage or yielding, or might result in a penalty, okay? So advantage means, and we see this a lot, we've got a pack of blockers skating along and there's like a little jostling or like the, the jammer is approaching from the back, and a blocker's Gate goes out of bounds a little bit, but they don't gain position, on, so it's just technically a, a cutting the track penalty or a skating out of bounds. Um, but they don't gain advantage, they don't change position relative to other blockers, they didn't change the course of gameplay, there's no advantage, so it's kind of like we're not going to worry about it too much. If we see it a ton, the officials are going to start to give you us the warning. Um, or let's say um, a, uh, a blocker hit the jammer and follows through with their elbow, but that serves to propel the jammer past them to where they want to be and actually gain advantage. So that's advantage. Uh, the, the blocker doesn't have to remedy their foul necessarily. Okay? Advantage happens very quickly in short track. It's happening second to second. So it's generally not called. If you are in doubt, and sometimes even if there is advantage, it's best on your best behavior and yield or make the remedy, um, and we'll go over what those remedies are, okay? So you can have advantage, you can have yielding, which means like taking a physical, uh, obvious action on the track. Um, we'll talk about a couple of the major ways to do this, um, which allows other skaters to gain position or regain position or restore advantage. Um, and then if those things aren't done or aren't possible, let's say the foul is uh, my mouth guard fell out of my mouth and landed on the track. I can't really, that's like that safety foul, that's like a procedural equipment foul. So I just get a penalty. And the penalty in short track roller derby is subtract two points from my team's score. So unlike other types of roller derby, there's no penalty box. 
you don't have to go sit down in the sin bin and like contemplate your bad behavior. You simply try to solve your bad behavior, and if it's not solvable, then your team takes a Questions so far? Okay. So we are going to talk about yielding. Um, so first off, for the officials, all right, let me, re- let me read it. I said I wouldn't add this. If a foul creates an unfair impediment or advantage to a team or a skater, the skater committing the foul may yield to avoid a penalty. A skater is encouraged to yield on their own acknowledgement of a foul being committed without or before an official's call. So if you know you did a bad, you correct it, right? You don't wait for the official's call you on it. If a skater fails to yield, their team is subject to a penalty. Again, a penalty being minus two points. Okay, so official. If an official observes a foul that merits a yield, they will blow one short whistle and call color, number, yield. They're not going to say tripping or, you know, your outfit's too fancy. They're not going to say a bunch of stuff. They're going to say blue for yield. Actually, they're going to say tweet, blue for yield. And when the whistle blows, the first time it happens to you, you will all stop skating and stare at the <laughs> Don't stop skating True unless story. you hear your number. Okay? That's my tip for the day. <laughs> so, you're going to hear, please, blue, five, yield. Blue, black, five, yield. Whatever, like that. That's what you're going to hear. Um, if you're not sure what you did wrong, the correct answer is to yield and not to go, what? I know it's good. I didn't do anything. You listen to the officials. They're watching. They saw. Okay. Um, okay, so let's talk about what yielding looks like. There's a couple of different situations, including like going off the track with a cut, um, and like if, whether you're behind the person or in front of the person. So um, we'll go through it. Hang with me, okay? So a skater may yield by visibly dis- disengaging from contact with any other skater, turning 90 degrees to the direction of gameplay. For example, your navel facing the line. Um, and bringing the hands to the shoulders with elbows held close to the body, called the yield position, until the skater or skaters they had fouled have passed their hips completely. Okay? So I'm on the track and I'm doing something and I know somebody by mistake. Whoops. I go here. And I wait for the player that I fouled to pass by me. Okay? If an opponent chooses not to pass a yielding skater or is already in front, let's say I back block somebody, okay? So there's a skater up here. Vic, would you like to be my demo buddy? So Vic's here, we're on opposing team, and you're facing this way, and I came in and I ran into the back of you. Whoops. Okay, they're already in front of me, so I can't wait for them to get past me, right? So in that case, I'm going to yield, I'm going to turn, and I am going to maintain the yield position for two seconds. One Mississippi, two Mississippi. Hopefully if the game is happening and stuff action like I've got catching up to do now, right? So I've taken myself out of the play. So if I'm playing defense and my other blocker buddy is there and the jammer's in the mix, like I've taken myself out of the action. The other the, my my blocker buddy has to kind of do the work by themselves. Does that make sense to everybody? So if the person's in front of you that you fouled, you only have to wait as long as until they go past you. If the person is did I say that right? If the person's behind you, we're skating this way. I foul someone behind me somehow. I foul someone and I end up in front of them as a result of the foul. I wait until they go by me. If I foul someone and they're already in front of me, I go one Mississippi, two Mississippi, and then I continue. Doesn't hurt to say yielding. That lets the other skaters know that you knew you did a bad if they're not, they can't pay attention and look and we're not spending our time here going like, ah, oh, you did nothing. Right? But like, if you would self-acknowledge and say yielding, and you do your thing, that's a good thing to do. Okay? Any questions so far? What if you don't know? <coughs> what if you don't know who you fouled? Probably the best thing to do is just give yourself the one Mississippi, two Mississippi. Yeah. And then in terms of positioning, because I'm facing you, I've been doing it facing this way. But ideally, if I'm on the edge, I would prefer to have my my soft foot facing the front, like facing the action here. So just for your own safety, you want to try to have your butt to the line and your, your navel facing in down. Does that make sense to everyone? Okay. 
Um, lots of little like uh, kind of picky things about like you know you don't want to um, yield in a way that creates more of an impediment, right? So like if I'm in the middle of a scrum and there's computers all around, I want to be like, oh, yielding, <laughs> right? And it's like making a big mess of everything. Um, there's also like how do I safely yield? Because I don't want to be like waving my arm, elbows at people's heads and all that kind of thing. So use your good judgment and do it in a safe way. Okay? It, it, you don't have to get to the edges. If, if the pack is going to leave you behind as you yield, just kind of wait and then just do it where you are and then continue to catch up. Make sense to everyone? So we're going to practice these things so that we're comfortable with them. Um, a skater who is in the yield position is considered in play for the purpose of pack definition. We'll go through that another day but may not be intentionally contacted by other players. This is a procedural foul, it's an instant penalty. If you hit somebody or roughly contact somebody who is yielding, it's called a jerk face penalty. Because <laughs> you're being a jerk face. That person is like a defenseless little bunny rabbit, right? So, <coughs> yes. So, if the official says, blue to yield and you are not listening, you don't pay attention or you just like blatantly fail to yield, then you are subject to minus two penalty, minus two points as a penalty. Alright? How are we doing? Still with me? Okay. Let me see what we're supposed to go through here. Hold on. Okay. So at another practice, we're going to work on how this is different for cutting. We don't have time to do that all today. Um, but we will talk really briefly about if you're a jammer. Because what happens if you're a jammer, a lot of times you end up past, like way past the people that you fouled. Um, so for a jammer, a lot of times the best way to think about um, yielding is to return to the scene of the crime. Okay? So if you do something and you end up flying by or you end up inbounds or whatever, or whatever, like just go back behind the person that you messed with and then do your yield, and then go. Okay? All right, that's it. You know everything you need to know. <laughs>